I'd like to start by bringing a blessing to the four directions. To the north, to Umi, where the cold winds blow. Komi, to the east, the direction of the sunrise, the springtime, when the land flourishes. Oho. Kitame, to the south, the time of the summer, the time that we're in right now. To the west, Ba'ime, the direction where the sun sets, day's end. Aho, Ba'ime. We'd like to honor those students that are coming back to continue in their studies, in their endeavors to accomplish whatever they want to accomplish in this new school year. And acknowledge that this college sets on indigenous land. And uh, it, it is an honor when the people start to acknowledge you and to remember that there were people here w way before a lot of the other people came and this place was created. I'd like to sing a song. Uh, it's an eagle song. The eagle is a, a symbol of uh, respect and strength. Hina. <laughs> Ha yo we yo we ya he ne ya he na Ha yo we yo we ya he ya he ne yo Ha yo we yo we ya he ne ya he na Ha yo we yo we ya he ne ya Kina Ha yo we yo we ya he ne ya kina Ha yo we yo we ya he ya he ne yo Ha yo we yo we ya he ne ya kina Ha yo we yo we ya he ne ya kina Ha yo we yo we ya he ne ya kina Ha yo we yo we ya he ya he ne yo Ha yo we yo we ya he ne ya in, uh, oh, ho, slow the eagle. Thank you for honoring us with that blessing. I want to recognize the land upon which our university stands today, the Sasavenga, the historic and unceded territory of the Sasavitam. The descendants of the first inhabitants of this land are still here, among us as citizens of the Fernandinho Tataviam Band of Mission Indians. We honor this sacred history today and every day. Good morning and welcome to the 2021-2022 academic year. I'd like to begin by thanking each of you for your very warm welcome to the Matador community. Your kindness and generosity of spirit have been so consistent, it feels like coming home. It is a distinct honor to lead this university and to formally mark the dawning of a new academic year, abounding with promise and renewed opportunities to ignite human potential and advance a more just and learned future. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to our esteemed campus leaders, Drs. Michael Neubauer and Teresa White, President and Vice President of the Faculty Senate, and Jonathan Hay and Caitlin Orozco, President and Vice President of Associated Students. I would also like to welcome back all of the members of our campus community with an especially warm welcome to our new faculty, staff, and administrative leaders who have joined us in the last year. We are delighted that you have selected CSUN as the place to invest your talents. I'd also like to pause for a moment and recognize the colleagues that we lost last year. They have left a lasting legacy with their contributions to our university and will always be part of our Matador community. September marks my eighth month as president of CSUN and what an unusual eight months it has been.
Engaging with all of you in largely two-dimensional spaces, yearning for the opportunity to gather in person and immerse ourselves in the vibrancy of our academic community. But of course, the Delta variant has unveiled yet another unpredictable pandemic path that we will traverse together and find community irrespective of the format. These past 18 months have changed our world and our nation in ways we don't yet fully comprehend. Four million people have lost their lives to a virus that locked us in our homes, wreaked devastating economic hardship, and distanced us all from one another and the human connections that bring meaning and purpose to our lives. And while we are certainly not out of the woods yet, we have an opportunity to reflect, reassess, and move forward with the resilience and innovative spirit that each of you has embraced every step of the way. In the past 18 months, you all transformed a brick and mortar institution into a largely virtual one in a matter of weeks. We Zoomed so much that Zooming became a verb, and I started to feel like I was in an episode of The Brady Bunch where several of you changed my name to President Beck, you're on mute. A mountain of gratitude goes to our colleagues in IT who provided us with the tools to leverage the power of technology to advance teaching and learning in new and compelling ways in the virtual environment and to our extraordinary faculty who harness their creativity to facilitate dynamic and engaging virtual classrooms in ways they never could have imagined. And to our colleagues in the Division of Student Affairs who supported our students in unprecedented and unparalleled ways, discovering new virtual engagement tools and ensuring that our students' basic needs and mental health were met, including the expansion of our food pantry and emergency housing programs. And to our colleagues who cared for our physical campus and literally kept the lights on while so many of us worked from home, including our facilities, groundskeeping and police services teams. And to our advancement team who continued to expand philanthropic investment in our students and managed complex campus communications and virtual events to help us stay connected even when we were physically distant. And to each and every one of you for your care, dedication and ingenuity. Albeit not as quickly as we would have preferred, we are slowly repopulating campus and finding new blends of in-person and virtual engagement. For many, this fall semester will be tough, and we will continue to draw strength from each other to support our well-being and capacity to advance the journey that lies ahead. If the past 18 months have highlighted anything about the character of our campus community, they have highlighted once again that we are a community relentless in our support of and service to our students. Rising in the face of challenge is what matadors do. I hope that the summer provided all of you with at least a few brief moments to pause and reflect on all that you have accomplished despite the challenges swirling around us. This summer, I had the opportunity to watch my boys slowly emerge from a life that had been largely relegated to the four walls of our home back into the bigger world around us. I had the immense joy of watching my youngest son, Tristan, whose soul is fed by basketball, fill with delight in anticipation of his first game back in more than a year. As I sat on the sidelines cheering him on, I quickly observed his joy dissolve into disappointment as he realized that his skills had faded in the pandemic. It is a feeling I had experienced myself when I first put my running pants back on and realized that they had shrunk by a lot. At halftime, my son melted into my arms, eyes filled with tears, and his brother whispered, the first half is behind you, Tristan. Now you need to stay focused on moving the ball forward. And in that moment, I reflected on the wisdom of moving forward. Moving forward is distinct from moving on, and it is not about going back. Moving forward focuses on the future. It offers respect for what came before and allows space to process the pain of what has transpired. But moving forward spotlights the journey ahead, 
harnesses courage in the face of challenge and envisions a brighter future. So as we gather here today to welcome a new academic year, a year unlike any we have experienced before, I hope we will pause and remember that matadors are moving forward. We are transforming lives for the better every day. We serve as a powerful engine of social mobility, fourth in the nation, and we play an essential role in expanding participation in our democratic republic. That is not a tagline. It is the essence of what we do and why we do it. And it does not happen by osmosis. It is the inevitable outcome of a community that is deeply rooted in a shared commitment to academic excellence, full of inquiry and discovery that facilitates a transformative learning environment, enables potential, and pushes on borders, literally and figuratively. Throughout the last year, we saw innumerable examples of transformative learning environments across every college, department, and division. My words alone cannot adequately capture the remarkable achievements of the past academic year, so let's see it in action. Debra, and thanks for sharing that rich data set. It's uh, an extraordinary way to start the conversation. Um, and it's such an honor to gather with all of you this morning and share this virtual space with colleagues across California and allies across the nation bound by a common cause. California State University North, which, which the with the visionary captain of the ship. Blessing to see uh, President Sister Erica back. And she's brand new. She hits the ground running and uh, already a force for good in so many ways.
and I can't wait for an engaging conversation. Today we come together honoring service, resilience, brilliance, and excellence of our dedicated colleagues in support of our student success. STEM Center down in Southern California. I want to thank Senator Padilla. I really just want to thank uh, Mackenzie Scott. I mean, it really is incredible the spotlight she's placed not just on CSUN, not just on, on public higher education, but also on equity and justice. It is genuinely remarkable what has been achieved, what you have accomplished during a pandemic, a pandemic that laid bare stark inequities across multiple dimensions, most especially impacting the very communities we seek to serve, uplift and enrich. The communities of color that are marginalized and silenced by persistent structural and systemic injustices. Now, more than ever, it is imperative that we stand in our commitment to advancing racial and social justice and that we reject false equivalencies between ideologies that seek to marginalize communities with those that seek to illuminate lived experiences and histories. That is the very essence of our educational mission. And as an institution of higher learning, our most urgent step in continuing to advance the change we wish to see in the world begins by ensuring all of our students have a timely pathway to earning their degree and realizing their greatest aspirations beyond our doors. Last year saw an enormous amount of work across the university to do just that. As part of our CSU Graduation Initiative 2025 efforts, we have made substantial gains in four-year graduation rates for first-time freshmen. Pending the results of the summer courses, we are projecting a grad rate of 24% for the fall 2017 cohort. This is nearly double our graduation rate of 12.6 when 2025 launched. Double. This progress reflects all of your efforts and it is having a decidedly positive impact on thousands of students, their families, and their communities. While we made significant progress in our four-year graduation rates, our six-year graduation rate for first-time freshmen is projected to hold steady at 54%, which is where they were last year, but still four percentage points higher than where we started. We are making extraordinary progress with our first-time transfer student graduation rates. At 45%, we have already exceeded our CSU target for two-year graduation rates and are well on track for the four-year rates, which are projected to be 81% for the fall 2017 cohort. The impact of our efforts should be celebrated. And I am so grateful to all of you for your commitment to ensuring that our students are able to walk across that commencement stage to a life that is forever transformed. And while we have made steady progress, our commitment to eliminating equity gaps necessitates that we disaggregate overall averages to better understand the unique experiences of our students. Although we have made some progress in narrowing equity gaps, we have a long way to go to eliminate them. The six-year graduation rate for the cohort of freshmen who entered CSUN in 2010 has a heartbreaking equity gap of over 14 percentage points. With focus and commitment, we have lowered this gap to 8.4 percentage points for the cohort entering in 2014. But even this equity gap in aggregate form renders invisible substantial differences for our student populations. For example, 
Our equity gap for Pell students was 4.9 percentage points last year. When we disaggregate Pell eligible students by race and by first generation status, we uncover deeper inequities. White Pell first generation students have a six year graduation rate of 70.3%, whereas black Pell first generation students have a graduation rate of 34%, a much bigger and deeply troubling gap. I know that we all share an unwavering commitment to serving our students and eliminating equity gaps. And it is important to remember that this work is complex. It involves multiple strategies and it takes time. Working together, I am confident that we can ensure that we have the data, practice leadership and disruptive strategies to eliminate systemic inequities in perpetuity. This work also requires institutional support and resources. I am very pleased to report that the CSU system successfully navigated an unprecedented state budget cycle last fiscal year. Fortunately, state and federal economic recovery occurred much more rapidly than anticipated. And as a result, the CSU received a substantial effusion of recurring and one-time state funds, and CSUN is in a much better financial position than we had anticipated at the start of last academic year. Importantly, CSUN's budget allocation this year includes $765,000 to support the new CSU ethnic studies requirements, as well as more than $1.35 million to support student basic needs and an additional $1.35 million for student mental health services. Combined, these allocations reflect a clear commitment on the part of the legislature to support our students. The state budget cycle also included a restoration of the $16 million permanent budget cut from last fiscal year and the daunting $33 million ongoing operating budget deficit that our campus faced in the 2020-2021 academic year has now been reduced to a manageable deficit of approximately $4 million. Our campus also received a total of $264 million in one-time federal HERF dollars, providing desperately needed direct financial relief to our students and some recovery for the extensive loss of revenue that occurred as a result of the pandemic and the pivot to a virtual campus. CSUN now has the ability to deploy one-time funds this year toward campus priorities with a particular focus on student success and the elimination of equity gaps. We look forward to our continued engagement with our university planning and budget group this fall as part of our budget process. Our campus will also receive a state allocation for system-wide deferred maintenance, which will be critical in maintaining our physical infrastructure and addressing our substantial deferred maintenance backlog. This will complement the many capital and deferred maintenance projects that are underway or have been completed during the pandemic, including the completion of our brand new state-of-the-art event center and campus eatery, the Orchard Conference Center, with a grand opening sometime this spring. In March, we secured Board of Trustees approval to begin construction on the Sierra Hall Annex, the first of a multi-phase project to renovate Sierra Hall, one of CSUN's oldest buildings. The annex features a beautiful, highly efficient, collaborative and sustainable design that includes small, medium and large classrooms that allow for active and flexible learning, lecture halls and ample study and student collaboration space. Sierra Annex is anticipated to break ground at the end of the calendar year with construction anticipated to be complete by August of 2023. CSUN's brand new Global HSI Equity Innovation Hub is slated to open in fall 2024 and features equity as a core design principle, creating a space that fosters aspirational capital and inspires intellectual curiosity. This project will leverage cutting edge technologies to design equity centered programming to serve our students, providing them with interdisciplinary educational pathways in STEM and equipping them with the skills they need to become the innovators and creators of the future. The HSI Equity Innovation Hub will serve as a distinctive sense of place, a powerful symbol of our collective approach to advancing the excellence of our richly diverse students and the future of creative technology, teaching, and learning. 
As I announced in May, the state of California invested $25 million in CSUN to build the hub, and by so doing, asked CSUN to serve as the model for the future of equity and innovation in engineering, computer science, and beyond. A clear indication of the confidence in our campus's ability to provide leadership to truly serve the rich diversity of California students. The initial planning that allowed the HSI Equity Innovation Hub to be shovel ready came from a gift from Autodesk, led by our alumnus, Andrew Enignost, who invested in planning for a Center for Possibilities with the College of Engineering and Computer Science. CSUN is excited to expand the scope of this project to include equity-centered programming that inspires students from historically underserved groups to pursue degrees and career pathways in STEM fields. Just months after announcing the HSI Equity Innovation Hub, we secured an additional $25 million gift, the second largest gift from a single donor in CSUN's history to support the programming for this ambitious project. In partnership with tech giant Apple, CSUN will serve as the epicenter of programming focused on transforming HSIs throughout the CSU and nation to diversify the future of STEM professionals. This incredible opportunity will accelerate our own institutional transformation and open our arms to engage a national network of HSIs to learn from one another and add to the national dialogue of culturally relevant practices to enhance student success. CSUN is a proud minority and Hispanic serving institution and we are planning with intention to regain designation as an Asian American and Native American Pacific Islander serving institution. We award more baccalaureate degrees to Latinx students than all but three universities in the country. Our richly diverse student population, combined with our extensive history of advancing racial and social justice, positions us to serve as leaders in advancing equity and educational outcomes on a national scale. I am confident that we will continue to find common cause with additional partners and change makers across the country who will invest in this work, thus investing in a more equitable future for us all. Mackenzie Scott and Dan Jewett are two such partners, deeply committed to advancing equity and inclusion, who a few short months ago provided us with an historic $40 million, the largest gift our campus has ever received. And while these dollars themselves are genuinely remarkable, the full impact of this gift transcends accounting. The state of California, Apple, and Mackenzie Scott and Dan Jewett have all invested in our academic community as leaders in advancing equity and inclusion and the social mobility of our students. Their belief and confidence in our future invites others to see that CSUN is not just any university. We are an exceptional institution of higher learning that disrupts intergenerational inequity and transforms lives for the better. These new one-time funds allow a rare opportunity to invest in the future over multiple years and multiple projects aimed at addressing some of the most critical needs that are central to our priorities. There are already some timely needs that the campus identified for me as part of my listening tour that we will be advancing this year to amplify our work in advancing racial and social justice and ensuring equitable educational outcomes. As part of my listening tour and in continued discussions, I heard many concerns about the continued racial violence, pain and trauma surrounding policing, including the murder of George Floyd and so many others. Though these specific events did not occur on our campus, they deeply affected us all and implore us to reflect on our own campus policing practices to ensure they reflect care for our communities of color and respect their lived experiences in society more broadly. Utilizing the resources from the Scott Gift and in consultation with our police advisory committee comprised of faculty, staff, and students, we have retained the services of an outside consultant with a demonstrated track record of critically examining university policing practices with an equity lens. Our consultants will seek broad campus participation in this process with extensive engagement with members of our community from traditionally marginalized groups. 
I seek your partnership and allyship in this important work this year as we work together to think about how we care for our community while also ensuring a safe learning and working environment for all. The Scott Gift will also allow us to continue to invest in our shared goals of diversifying our faculty and staff as we work together to create holistic, inclusive recruitment, hiring, and retention practices that will allow us to continue to benefit from the cultural wealth of a richly diverse faculty, staff, and leadership team. I am grateful to all of our colleagues who have supported these efforts and would like to specifically express my appreciation to Dr. Elena Miranda and Dr. Sylvia McCauley for their tremendous efforts in advancing this work. In my conversations with our faculty, staff, and students, I also heard an urgent need to build more community. With the benefit of the Scott Gift, we have the opportunity to think about belonging and student success in new and compelling ways, harnessing the aspirational capital that our students bring to our academic community. This year, we will be engaging in a wide-ranging discussion about developing a broad complement of identity-based resource centers on campus, led by Drs. Freddy Sanchez, Marquita Gamage, and Melanie Bocanegra. This work will take a comprehensive approach to identifying ways we might create physical and aspirational centers of educational equity that integrate proven strategies in the elimination of equity gaps and show our students that identity is power. I encourage this team and I invite all of you to imagine new ways of supporting our students that infuse best practices and immense creativity. Please watch for upcoming opportunities to participate in these important discussions as well as a host of additional topics as we build on your feedback and the themes that emerged in the course of my listening tour and work together to create a roadmap for the future. We officially launched this work last week with a convening of more than 120 leaders across campus who provided extensive feedback on the process. The work will continue as Provost Walker, assisted by many leaders across campus, will be engaging with a broad array of campus constituencies to further define our collective priorities, which will advance a bright future for the university we all love. Your ongoing input and creative thinking throughout this process will ensure that we envision the future that we, our students, and our communities deserve for generations to come. We have established a website to communicate ongoing progress, and I encourage you to participate as we move Matadors forward together. Moving forward asks us to reflect on the deeper meaning of our work. We are in the business of facilitating human potential. But through the course of the year, this foundation may lose its luster, become buried in checklists, routines, and an ever-evolving set of public health rules. If we're not paying attention, they can dominate the focus of our work. It may appear to be goal-directed. We send the email, write the lecture, attend the meeting, but those activities themselves do not provide meaning to our work. I hope that as we enter an academic year that is once again profoundly distinct and infinitely more challenging than those we have experienced before, we remember that we are transforming lives for the better. And given all that is happening around us, it could not be more clear that our work is needed now more than ever. Alex Salazar, one of our superstar graduate students, reminded me of just how much a few short days ago. Can you see the sun? After months of staring at the same walls, repeating the same walks and talks, eating the same meals, we are finally starting to return. We can see the sun stand up. Take a breath. 
This transition back will not be perfect, but one thing that's for certain is that we need each other. Whether it's in person, online, or hybrid, we need to see each other. This semester brings a blank canvas and we are all artists. Pick up that paintbrush and dream unapologetically. You have a story and it's begging to be written. And I know that last chapter was challenging, but we now turn to a new page. Can you see the sun? As we start this new semester, we will rise as one. As we start this new semester, we will thrive as one. It will not be easy, but we can piece it together. If we can lean on each other through any season or weather, we have been in the dark for so long, but we can be a light for one another, shine bright for one another, do right for one another. This is where matadors belong. The power of his words brings tears to my eyes. We can be the light for one another and do right for one another, and we will. If there is any public institution in our country that has the potential to put us on a course to a more equitable and just society, it is this university. We do not need to be more like any other university in LA or beyond. We need only become more of ourselves. We need to amplify the understanding of who we are and what we do, and why investing in us is investing in a brighter and more equitable future for our students and for us all. I am so very proud to serve as your president. Embracing the wisdom that my child imparted on the sidelines of a basketball game, I know that together we will continue to move matadors forward because our students can see the light at the end of the pandemic tunnel, because all of you bring the sun. This is where matadors belong. I wish you a very safe and enriching and productive academic year.